Okay, so my presentation, I hope you can see it right now. Yes. I sh yes? Yes. So on the similarity among priority deriving methods for the AHP. And actually, I conducted some research about uh, various priority methods for the AHP, as we all know. There are many of them, actually tens of them. And actually, I was able to select few of them that, uh, in, a, in a way, that were interesting for me. Uh, because of the result, of course, that the simulation produced during my research. And the basic objective of the research was to establish a relation between some so-called so genuine and estimated priority vectors derived from simulated pairwise judgments. And by genuine, I mean that uh, priority vectors that we can uh, compute on the basis on the basis of physical attributes of some objects, like for example, Tom Sati did once in, in the, uh, on the figures that the shapes were judged by, by some group of people and also the uh, relative elements, like attributes of those figures could be computed on the, on the basis of the, of, the, of the field, for example, right? We can do the same with the mass of objects and things like that. So good or poor relations, I thought that will reflect quality of selected estimation techniques and their uh, credibility. And uh, I proposed, uh, for example, uh, such measures as mean spearman rag correlation coefficient between estimated and genuine priority vector, mean Pearson correlation coefficient, mean average absolute deviation between those vectors and average root mean square deviation. And uh, to do the simulation, of course, uh, we need some assumptions. And I did it actually uh, on the basis of the single pairwise comparison matrix, matrix and uh, uh, on the basis of the whole model, actually. And the theoretical concept of the whole AHP model, uh, I assumed it will be a, a model cons which consists of four criteria and four alternatives under each criterion. Uh, of course, uh, we need also some scale to do the comparisons. The, as we all know, the most known scale is the Tom Sati scale consisted of uh, some intensity, intensities of importance you know, from one to nine. And uh, also other scales also exist, but uh, I didn't uh, uh, focus, I didn't focus uh, on, on them. Uh, however, I am in the middle of my research that I will also uh, examine results from other scales uh, in the, typical uh, typical uh, consistent situation we have the pairwise comparison uh, can be uh, derived actually computed from this original priority vector but uh, uh, there are also uh, situations that uh, of course the pairwise comparison matrix is inconsistent so uh, then the, uh, the, the the priority vector is computed actually from the pairwise comparison. And I took that actually uh, for the example of the simulation scenario. And I can also present that and discuss, but we uh, of course have little time for, for, for the presentation. So uh, I, I can only show you uh, the concept actually here and of, of course, encourage if you are interested to, to, to get acquainted with my short article and potential. I hope I can also present the, the, the detailed results of my research <clears throat> in, the, in my research paper, which I'm, I hopefully will prepare for the International Journal of AHP. So um, here we have some example that on the basis of the hypothetical, hypothetical priority vector, I established a pairwise comparison matrix, which is computed directly from the from the 
priority vector, hypothetical priority vector, which actually in the assumption reflects some physical attributes of four objects. And here we have such hypothetical priority vector with respect to the goal. Here we have uh, two priority vectors, hypothetical priority vectors with respect to criteria, uh, some C1 and C2 and C3 and C4. And on that basis, I calculated the hypothetical total priority vector. And the same I actually did for the so-called perturbed priority matrix, uh, per pairwise comparison matrices. Uh, and I perturbed them in the way that I only applied the reciprocal condition that each matrix should be reciprocal. And I rounded the elements of the matrix on the on the uh, uh, of the matrices, sorry, to the closest value of SATI scale, and on that basis, with the application of a right eigenvector method, I calculated priority partial priority vectors, and so I uh, obtained some some result, and I in this way could compare uh, total computed priority vectors uh, and uh, hypot and the, the difference between the, the, the original uh, total um, computed priority vector and the hypothetical total priority vector. As you see, the weights are a little bit different and these differences of course can be measured by some uh, deviations like for example, uh, meet, mean, absolute deviation between uh, those elements or P Pearson correlation co coefficient or Spearman rank correlation coefficient. And I applied applied actually um, such scenarios to few selected methods. And from my uh, research actually examination, the last method uh, occurred very interesting, which is actually totally not unknown, which is the logarithmic utility approach to AHP and uh, except from uh, rounding errors and reciprocal condition, I also applied some perturbation factor, uh, which additionally distorted the matri matrix, pairwise comparison matrix. Uh, the, the, the element was applied with some probability distribution and uh, that this is recommended in literature that probability distributions can be like gamma, log normal, truncated normal, and et cetera. And I found that for example, uh, studying the, for example, uh, logarithmic utility approach and the right eigenvector, vec uh, right, uh, eigenvector uh, method for 1000 randomly generated single reciprocal transitive pairwise comparison matrices. As you can see for uh, the various number of alternatives from three to 12 actually, that these methods, these two methods are actually from the perspective of mean Spearman correlation coefficient actually uh, practically similar because the mean Spearman rank correlation coefficient for all alternatives is equal to one. So the ranks are totally uh, the same. Dr. Uh, Kajibutsky, just yes. to let you know that you have um, one minute left, if you could start to wrap up, please. Yes, of course, of course. I applied uh, also this the simulation scenario that I presented you uh, to the performance evaluation of logarithmic utility approach and uh, the ref for n equal four element with some perturbation factor from 0 0.8 and 1.8 for 10,000 cases. And the results are also very encouraging. I did also for different uh, intervals of the perturbation factors, uh, like for different uh, number of alternatives. And also for the whole AHP actually framework where number of criteria and number of alternatives were also drawn uh, from the set of five to nine. And as you can see, these are very, very attractive results uh, 
from the perspective of different scenarios and even with such a number of case uh, cases actually that are even statistically uh, significant. So uh, to conclude, both procedures taken into consideration are very competitive and the right again vector method and the lo uh, logarithmic utility approach are very comparative evaluations and can lead to the conclusion that sometimes even the logarithmic utility approach is a little, a little better from that perspective. And that phenomenon uh, observed in this research concerned the entire AHP model, not only the single pairwise comparison matrix. Thank you so much. Of course, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. I think we have a, at least a couple of minutes, right, Margarita? Yes, that's correct. We, we still have um, five minutes for questions. Okay, so the problem, if we give five minutes for questions and nobody asks a question. <laughs> <laughs> there, there is one um, there is one in the chat. Question. You want me to read it? Elio asks, do you confirm that the statistical indices you use can give more accurate results if you have many elements, for example, criteria of alternatives, as you have more data in such case? So you think that the, um, the indices that you have, that you, which are normal, you normally used in forecasting, right? Um, mm -hmm. Do, do, is that it can give more accurate results. I'm not sure what accurate result means, but that's what he's asking. As you have more and more data in each case, can you say that the, the statistical results will help you to be more accurate? Accurate, uh, I think that uh, the, the, the question concerned, concerns the, the, the number of iterations that I applied. Actually, mm -hmm. uh, they are more accurate in the case that more iterations are applied. I applied, for example, uh, for the transitive uh, reciprocal pairwise comparison uh, matrices, 1,000 iteration. But for the whole, actually, um, AHP model, I applied 10,000 uh, iterations. So I uh, perturbed each vector, uh, priority vector, 100 times. And also, I generated 100 such vectors. So in total, I, ha I had 1,000, uh, uh, 10,000, 10, sorry, uh, iterations. If, of course, the simulation expands uh, for, for example, 100,000, the, 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 uh, the results will be more accurate from the statistical point of view, because as you saw, uh, perhaps, um, uh, maybe I will, oh, for example, in this case, this is 10,000 cases analyzed. And these differences actually are is very small. Actually, this is the third place after the comma, the, 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 where, where is the, the difference can be spotted. There is another, there is another question here. Um, of, yeah. Uh, yeah. Or in Cooper asked, did you consider using a routine index to compare the differences? You're using statistical model to compare vectors, but how about using the routine index? The same could be applied for the use of the, the Hilbert metric, for example. So, so, so those are indices people use sometimes to compare the eigenvectors rather than using the statistical approach. Um, I mean, just a question. Well, you didn't, you didn't, that's the matter. Actually, yes, I, I, I only used statistical approach okay. to, to, to this uh, because I used the Monte Carlo, yes, uh, simulation. And obviously, position. the larger the sample, the closer you're going to get the normal, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. So then you can actually do a, a hypothesis test. If you actually, I can, yes, uh, do the, the research for the uh, higher number of iteration and the, the uh, differences then will be... Uh, statistically uh, viable and significant. So well, it's very interesting if you, if you, sure. if you, we keep your if mind. you are interested, of course, it. I will be happy to write uh, more in my research paper. Okay, thank you. Thank yeah, you. You're welcome. I thank you for being so, here. So the next speaker is um, Jombor Zadoki from Hungary. Wow, you're far away. Uh, proposal for the set of pairwise comparisons. 
and you have to go up to other coffers. I don't, I haven't remember them, but obviously they are there. You are the presenter, so you are, you are in charge. 